Hello fellow incarnators. Today I'd love to introduce a whole new feature that we added to the brush tool. That's going to be on the left toolbar, third icon down. It's going to be that brush where you can just click the B key. Okay. You click that and then you're going to notice that there's a new layer called the top layer, which is used to paint on top of everything. So if I just select a texture like I normally would, and then I apply it to the canvas, it's going to be on top of everything, including filters. Now, because that layer is isolated, you can just click this erase icon right here, and you'll be able to erase over whatever you painted. Now, while the erase button is still selected, you can click that fill button and it will erase everything. And the converse is true. If you unselect, pick the texture and then click fill, while the erase button is not selected, it will fill it with that texture, okay? So if I click erase again and then fill, it will remove everything. And of course, all the similar options for the edgy brush, circle brush, the grid, and all the various shapes are there. So it acts just the same as the brush tool normally does. It's just that we've added a new top layer and an erase function. So I could direct your attention to the right panel, you click that layers tab, you're going to see at the very top, there's the top layer among the layers. If you apply a texture to the canvas or to the top layer, and then you select that little eyeball on the far right, it will turn the layer off and it will also turn the layer back on. If you click that cog, that is the layer options, you're going to see that there's an opacity slider bar. And there's also a blend mode option, just like you would see with the stamps, the text, and the paths. Go ahead and experiment and see what you can come up with. Let's talk about use cases. One of the best use cases is you'll be able to paint over buildings. For instance, some buildings in Fantasy Regional don't have snow on top of them, so if you wanted a snow scene, it wouldn't be too hard. Just pick the snow texture of your choice, set the opacity and the softness of the brush, and just apply. And then you'll be able to put snow on pretty much anything that you want. Any stamp that exists in the catalog, you can paint on top of it. Another great use case is that you can make your mat look like it's underwater. So you select a texture of your choice, go ahead and drop the opacity because you want to be able to see the things underwater, and then just click the fill button and it will fill the entire thing. Another use case is you can do lighting and shadow. Why use a light stamp when you can just paint? Just choose the color of your choice, make sure the top layer is selected, and just take that yellow color. You can even expand it out. You can drop the opacity even more and make it rather large so that you get a lot of light here. And then just take that black texture, bring the opacity back up, and you can just paint the shadows like so. You can also choose just to hide parts of a stamp. Say you want this obelisk right here to be hidden somewhat in the, in the sand. Just apply the texture right over it. And it will look like that this obelisk is kind of hidden underneath the sand. A lot of people have been asking, well, how do you do a fog of war option? Well, that's totally possible. Just go to that top layer again choose the black color and choose fill. Let the whole screen fill up and then just take that erase button and then just erase sections of the map that you would like to have shown. Last use case, just like you can make a fog of war, you can also just make your own clouds, just that white color and just paint over the layer and you can make these kind of clouds. It's probably a little bit easier than trying to piece together a bunch of cloud stamps. So just paint it instead, much, much quicker. And I'm sure there are tons of other use cases that you could think of. Thanks for watching.